talk like four or five minutes about your IPR disclosure. Well, I don't need it doesn't need four or five minutes. I don't think. I uh, don't you I you have four or five minutes if you want. But uh, okay. yeah, tell me when you want me to talk about it. Yep. Any other business? No. Um. Okay, uh, you don't hear other things, so I'll progress to the the the, to the action items. Um, let me just uh, edit this page so we can do the changes on the fly. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they um, are the correct order. Yeah, that the, we had an act, open action item for the chairs this time. Um, it's outstanding for the last three weeks, and uh, to this to, to find a way for closure on the discussion on in stack data, post stack data, um, the, the 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 email discussion that was going on on the mailing uh, working group list. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a meeting that uh, happened uh, with the chairs met and uh, we touched upon this uh, this uh, this item uh, lightly but uh, the meeting was concentrated on the second uh, topic that we'll be talking about today uh, so we ran out of time uh, we didn't get uh, to finish on this action item uh, we will be having a follow-up uh discussion within the chairs and uh let me give a chance to loa to talk more uh you know uh, if i missed anything on yesterday's meeting no i think this is practically uh, we had two items on the um, the agenda yesterday and we spend a little bit more than an hour on talking about uh, eli versus a uh, new spl and the uh, for for indicating network actions, uh, and that's what I going to talk about a little bit after this. And I also plan to call a meeting Monday, Tuesday to discuss the ISD PSD issue. So you should be expecting some type of result next week. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the second action item um let me see i know that greedy is not uh, here because he sent me a note um but if the any of the co-authors henny i uh, have has an update since last week uh for the new revision uh, please let us know uh the uh, the idea was to progress the draft if uh, after we have the uh, new revision posted so if anyone has this update, let me know. I don't think so. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, the next action item is a uh, long standing one. I think uh, it is relating to the in stack <clears throat> post stack data discussion. So, uh, you know, uh, we can lump it with, uh, with the 1st action item that we have open. Um, we, we opted to keep it open for the history. I think, uh, mm, or actually, because we proposed, um. The solutions documents to uh, to give examples in the solution document, you know, on the feasibility or uh, uh, of of uh, realizing the 
the solu a, a realistic solution. Uh, each solution to, to present a realistic example for in stack data and post stack data. So it's an open action on the solution authors, solutions documents authors. Sorry. Um, so I can close this action item uh, or we can keep it open. What do you guys think? Which one? Which one? This this uh, this or action item basically we're asking the authors of the solutions documents to have examples, uh, realistic examples of in stack data and post stack data, and uh, and to present them so that we can uh, you know validate the feasibility of the proposals. <clears throat> Tarek, I, it's it's. I'm uh, sorry, I need to raise my hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can I can I Wim, say go ahead. something? Go ahead. Wim. Yeah. So, would it not be useful? I think I uh, be useful to discuss because we have the use cases, right? To discuss how a solution would uh, work with either both in stack and post stack data, or all, also only post stack data, because I think that's probably the way that we need to figure out whether we need it. I, I think the, the question is, can we live without Instack data or do we need it, right? I think for me, that's the, 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 the question. And what are the implications if we would not have it? And what would be the advantages if we have it? And as such, I would, I, or one of the proposals could be that we take the use cases and see how a solution would work without uh, in-stack data. Does that yeah, make sense? I, I, this is why I said it's related to the first action item discussion. Uh, you know, the idea of uh, IASD and PSD uh, existence. Do we need both or maybe... And another way to look at it is it's an implementation where you put the metadata or the, the ancillary data. Uh, is it in the post stack or in stack? It's an implementation, but um, but this is where the example, uh, you know, uh, if you put it in stack data and it's a huge uh, amount of ancillary data, then it becomes infeasible. So this is where the uh, realistic example makes sense. Uh, uh, it's another way of uh, looking at it, uh, when Yeah, but but I think you know, if I mean we have the if we have the use cases. I, so the way I look at it is the following. I I mean we have the use cases that we need that we want to support going forward, right? And if there is, let's say, a use case that we could not do, or there would be certain reasons why we could not do it, if we would not have instant data then that would make it clear uh, on why we need uh, why we need it and then how we will do it right so and that's at least uh, how I, I i for me the 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 thing that that would clarify a lot not so okay so should we raise our hands or... mm, i think uh there's no one else. Uh, there's a G actually bef before Loa. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, G, go ahead. Hi, Tarek, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I agree that maybe we can do some analysis based on the use cases and compare the different uh, proposals we have so far. And actually we have uh, uh, some Examples maybe we can follow like the uh, solution analysis done in the SRV6 compression, header compression design team. They used to uh, uh, write the draft on the analysis and comparison between several options of the encoding and based on the requirements and some uh, use cases. So I think maybe that is some approach which we can follow or uh, use. Uh, in our design team also. 
Thanks. You're welcome. Lower. Um, the I think that what's wrong with this action item is that it's not personalized. It just says authors. So we probably should talk to someone that wants uh, PSD and ISD to come up with an example. The one that someone that only only want PSD to come up with one example, and then we can go from there. Uh, so I guess we have had a uh, quite long discussion and uh, if we look who has been proposing what, uh, we can probably pick a name there. Okay, thank you. Tony, uh, you want to comment? We already have uh, proposals that already describe this, right? FAI, Caridi's FAI proposal shows an example where there's both ISD and PSD. How use proposal uh, has only PSD. What's so difficult yeah. about this? Uh, great. Uh, I agree with you, Tony. I may, may I, you know, raise my hand now and, and comment. So I think um, there are multiple proposals, including Kiriti's, that have uh, described how you can do ISD and how you can do PSD. Um, I am going to interpret uh, what Stewart what proposed last time when we logged this uh, update is to have an example, a uh, realistic example of how we can realize ancillary data in the NSTAC. Uh, and uh, how in the post stack and such a solution document. Um, so maybe not the how, but uh, oh, but mm, maybe an example that, that's missing, not just how uh, formally we can do uh, carry the data. Um, uh, and I want to comment on the uh, use cases uh, analysis. So use cases don't dictate the how the solution will look. And use case will describe the use case itself, and the solution document will say, "I want to uh, solve this uh, this way or that way." Um, so it's hard for me to see how use cases document can debate a solution. Uh, that's it from my side. Um, I see John is in the queue. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that we we have had an existence proof for the utility of in-stack data for a number of years with the ELI EL. Okay. Uh, why you? Yeah, I, I, I think the use case itself doesn't dictate how it can be implemented, but uh, the fact is um, uh, it can be implemented in either way, but one way is uh, better than other. So I think it's still important to analyze, uh, analyze this uh, use case uh, case by case um, to make a fair comparison, uh, which uh, how to implement it is a uh, more uh, is, is better uh, in, in hardware uh, in terms of uh, performance, right? That, so, so in, in that sense, I think it's a it's a useful work to to do that. And another point I want to comment is that uh, now it seems um, uh, as we uh, mostly agree that the post stack data is uh, necessary. There, there, there is some uh, uh, contentious or uh, doubts about the in-stack data and uh, how to indicate the presence of the, uh, both ISD and PSD. So I, I suggest that we can actually split the effort and uh, um, uh, first we can, uh, it makes the, uh, uh, the post-stack data work uh, progress. And uh, meanwhile, we can continue the discussion on the ISD and uh, uh, indicator stuff. So because uh, we already have a, a mature um, uh, proposal for the PSD, I think we can uh, go ahead to um, make that progress. 
that's my point. Thank you. Okay, Matthew. But so it's quite common to to um, tie or demonstrate the applicability of a, a solution to to a use case through an applicability statement, and um, I would thought would have thought each one of these solutions has to really has has to have an applicability statement and and it has to also of course um, uh, address the requirements and framework and and hopefully all those three together should define whether or not ISD or PSD is more appropriate for you know solving that use case. I agree. Thank you and uh, and Tony, you're next. It seems to me like we're trying to jump the gun here that basically what people are trying to do is to argue about uh, contrasting solutions at this point and, and trying to do this in some way that's upfront and, and ahead of the game of actually getting all the solutions on the table and getting things agreeing on our framework and requirements documents and getting those settled. Um, and I really think that all of this is kind of pointless. Um, we've shown that PSD is absolutely necessary in some cases. Um, we've shown that ISD does work and has been very practical for entropy. Um, you know, some solutions may choose to do, go down that path. Some solutions may choose not to. And when we get to picking a solution, well, then we can have this debate. Arguing about it now is not helping. Me. Loa? Uh, so, Tony, what you're saying is that, okay, let's do uh, framework requirements, use cases, and whatever analysis uh, we're going to make. Uh, progress those documents, and when we actually start paying attention to the solutions document, uh, we take one solution at a time, and then we decide for that solution if it needs uh, one or two day ways of uh, carrying uh, uh, ancillary data. Is that what you're saying? We don't get to decide anything about a solution. That's up to the solution authors. No, it's up to the working group when the document becomes a working group document. Uh, I'm very sorry. I think you're wrong. So you're not going to make the work group documents? No, I'm saying the solution authors get to choose how their solution operates. That's not up to the working group. Um, I don't think so. Okay. Um, but basically, you say when we start progressing work uh, solutions, then we pick a solution that actually include PSD and ISD or one or the other for that particular solution. At some point, we have to make a choice between solutions. Okay, we have a variety on the table. We need to pick one of them. That's got to happen some way, somehow, in the far distant future. Until yes. then, we have to have give the authors the ability to do whatever they want within their solution. It is completely their purview as to what is in their solution. Uh, agreed. But what I'm saying is that if we have two different solutions, one for uh, uh, load sharing and another for uh, OAM. If we make a, just a decision for one of them, it doesn't affect the other. We don't make decisions about different solutions. It is up to the working group to pick a solution of the many different offered solutions. We then, once we've adopted that solution, then yes, we may we as a working group may morph it. No question, but first we have to pick a solution to start with. Um, 
what I'm trying to say, and I, I'm kind of looking for the process, is that if we go down with an uh, one uh, IOM solution and say, okay, this solution does only need PSD, that does not that does not preclude that any other solution, for example, a um, uh, kind of load sharing solution could have I, ISD and PSD. Uh, excuse me, I, I'm kind of confused though. Uh, the solution here you mentioned is uh, about the solution for each individual use case or the solution for actual encoding of SD and PSD. I think that two things are different. Right, um, I think for the encoding, we are neutral to the application and the use case. We just provide the kind of a general generic container uh, for the use case. So, which means uh, some existing use case can be can fit in, and even some un un unknown use case uh, in the future can also fit in. But that's a uh, that's for the um, encoding itself. And another kind of solution is that we actually propose how to fit the some use case uh, to to this structure. So those th two things are different. I'm confused. What kind of solution uh, you are you are mentioning here? Uh, Hoi Yu, th thank you. Uh, can you please next time you know get into the queue? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Wim, you're next. Yeah, so I'm a bit yeah a bit confused. Of, I, so we started the discussion about ISD and PSD. Uh, my personal view is I, it's not to pick a solution. Uh, I for me I understood that it's not to pick a solution whatsoever. I, I my understanding is that I we should have I I think what we want to achieve is do we really need ISD going forward or not. Because I believe any solution that we have on the table can be adopted to either use it or not. So I'm, I, my, my actual, my real question is, so we started to say we have an action point on ISD PSD. What are we trying to achieve at this stage? So the, when the, the first action item, uh, there was a long debate on, uh, should we do, should we carry data and in stack or in post stack or in both uh, and there uh, you know that the action item was on the chairs to uh, review the uh, discussion and come up with a way to progress further uh, here i think it's uh, it, it we had a we had a, a utility and feasibility uh, check uh, action item and uh, different vendors have presented uh, their designs and usability of uh, each solution. Um, but then we decided towards the end that a solution that will be put forward to the working group can actually uh, uh, model a use case, a realistic use case using uh, the proposed uh, way and uh, come forward to see that does it hold through the, the uh, that uh, test, a uh, truth of, uh, test uh, or not. So that that's the last update. Yeah, that's but good, so if, if you, I, I, can I still comment or I don't know how the process, is it still okay to respond or should I go back? Yeah, to I you? mean, you asked the question, I tried to answer. But no, it's okay, yeah, because see, I mean, a realistic use case, I, I'm going back to the use case document because I mean, I can pick whatever realistic use case and then I can prove that it works, but I think we should, as as Matthew also alluded to, is is have an applicability to the use cases at the end of the day, because that's the only way that we can make a a truthful analysis of whether or not uh, this is feasible. Agreed. Yeah. That's why for me the use cases as such is kind of our thing that on which we have to validate, and I and personally, Tony, I mean I. I'm not at this stage trying to exclude one solution or the other. I think we just, I, what I would like to see out of this action point is how each of these solutions would work uh, in such an environment. 
and that could be used as a as a data point to then later on decide or whatsoever. Does that I that would be a way forward from my perspective. John, you're next. John Drake. Okay. Uh, All right. Um, how you is correct. There's actually two solutions that there's two different types of. We we lost you, John. I'm sorry. I can't hear you. Uh, your your voice is very faint now. Anyone else is hearing you? Hello? No, same as you. Um, initially, oh. went quiet, and then a tiny micro fraction of voice, and then nothing. Can you hear me? Yeah, if you can come closer a bit, but I can hear you now. <laughs> very, very faint, John. Okay. Uh, what, I was, uh, what I was trying to say was that uh, how you is correct. There is there is basically a solution which talks about how a, a solution talks about how uh, MPLS network actions in general are to be supported, and that needs to be consistent with what's going to be described in the framework draft. Then there are solutions for the individual network actions, and uh, the solution for an individual network. So, for example, if we might specify that the framework solution for MPLS network actions has to accommodate in stack data and post stack data. But then the individual network action definition can specify whether it uses in stack data or post stack data. And so once we've got the framework decided upon, then we decide how we want to address the individual network actions definitions. And so from my perspective, eliminating at this point in the process, carrying in stack data is, you know, it's basically saying that we're not future proofing what we want to be doing 15 or 20 years down the road. Plus, we've already demonstrated that in stack data has tremendous utility and we ought to allow it. Whether we decide to use it initially or not is a decision which is made on the in definition of the individual network action. Thank you. Tony, you're next. We should be very clear. When we say a solution, we are talking about an MNA solution, i.e., what is the overall architecture that we're going and mechanism that we're going to use moving forward. Some solutions may choose to have in stack data for some actions. Some solutions may use, uh, some actions may require post stack data, and some actions may require both. And that is currently up to the solution document itself. And we should not be trying to articulate that right now. That's not our purview. Again, that's up to the solution authors. Um, I agree with John. Uh, we definitely can be moving forward with this. Um, we should not be trying to choose the exact solution right now. Uh, we've shown that the in-stack data is actually very, very useful and efficient on existing hardware. Other people have been arguing that in future implementations, and in particular in P4, that in stack data is difficult. Well, okay, that may be true, but we don't architect for just a future solution. That's not very helpful. We have an entire internet to run, and a lot of it is installed base. If we can't make things work on the installed base, we're not going to get adoption anyway. So let's not choose based on that. That makes no sense at all. G, G, you're next. <clears throat> I think uh, we're talking about uh, the framework uh, solution and uh, the solutions for specific network actions. And for the framework, actually, we need to be very careful and. Uh, uh, do a very detailed analysis about uh, how much changes we are really required to the MPRS architecture and the MPRS data plane. 
uh, as well the forwarding models. And uh, I think uh, for the ISD, uh, some someone has proved it is uh, efficient for some cases. Well, I think it's more analysis will be needed if uh, whether it can be uh, the same functionality can be provided to uh, with PSD only. That will simplify the architecture changes to the MPRS and also the encoding. And so I think uh, for the framework solution, such uh, analysis will be very useful. Okay. Uh, um, I, I still have one person in the queue, Tony. I don't know if you on purpose have yourself in the queue. Uh, G, you're done, right? Hello? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I will. Okay, now. Uh, Tony, you're next. Yes, we do have, uh, we've looked at ISD repeatedly. We've talked about uh, reachable stack depth or reachable label depth. And, you know, we know that there are implementations out there that are going to take an extreme performance hit if everything is in PSD. And people don't seem to want to admit that. And until we do, we're going to be stuck in this same loop. So, you know, the question is, do you want MNA to perform? Okay. Um, oh, Wim, you're back in the queue. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, maybe at the Tony point, I think also we have to be careful because you say, okay, today we have proved that entropy label work as in, in stack data example. And okay, there's a lot of implementation. The other actions and the flexibility that is being proposed for ISD is not a given that it would support on existing hardware, if I'm honest. So there will be lots of hardware, existing hardware, which even today, although the readable label stack depth is 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 uh, probably limited, would also not be able to process the ISD. So as such, we are just uh, not solving anything. Uh, and there may be a few pieces of hardware that can do it, but there will be many that cannot. And so as such, we have to look at it uh, a little bit. Okay, on one hand, what can we do today? But also, what would be the best way forward uh, going forward for people to implement it? And if you look in general, Having hardware that is uh, able to read uh, deep into the package will be mandatory going forward. Anyhow, not only for MPLS, but also for V6. So this is something we'll need to do no matter what. And we have to put all of those things into, into perspective. Tony? Find those assertions to not be credible. Uh, we have a great deal of hardware out there. It's Turing equivalent. It has a finite label uh, label depth, and within those two constraints, it can do basically anything. So if you've got hardware out there that can't isn't Turing equivalent, well, I mean that's a big problem. But there is a lot of hardware out there that is Turing equivalent, and so what's the big deal? Let us go forward and trying to make use of what's out there. But uh, you can also not prove that all the hardware that is out there is, yeah, sorry, I was jumping into the queue, but I think your uh, your statement about the fact that the, the hardware that's out there can support it, I also think it's not uh, not credible, uh, if I'm honest, because uh, we are all using the same chips, so for the most part. No, we're not. Yes, we do, for the most part. I work for a vendor and you're not using our chips. I mean, so we also do our own chips, but we also use uh, Mercy Silicon. So I, I, I can tell you that the, uh, I, we have to design for both. It's not only for the thing that, that uh, is the most uh, flexible. We have to design for the union, not the most restrictive. Thank you. Loa, you're next. Thank you. Uh, I think. Yeah, this is a good background to the discussion for the working group shares to have beginning of next week, possibly to come up with some type of result. Uh, I think, uh, as for now, 
uh, I don't think we should exclude anything in the um, in the framework. And then we start developing solutions documents. They pick whatever method they want. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. John, you're the uh, last. I, I mean, we did have representatives from one of these um, commodity hardware companies uh, attend some of our design team meetings, and they indicated that they had no problem with in-stack data. Yeah. Um, Greg, you're next. Um, thank you. Um, I agree with their uh, argument that uh, was expressed by John and Tony. Um, it would seem to be uh, res too restrictive to exclude uh, in-stack data as a mechanism that uh, m and can use. Uh, and then when we get to the use cases, then uh, it, we can discuss whether uh, use of in-stack data, post-stack data. Um, we already dealt with their uh, different uh, capabilities of the boxes being uh, in the network and uh, minimum stack uh, advertisement for IGP and uh, BGPLS is an example. So uh, that's not a new problem. Um, if, if and when we get to the situation, then uh, we'll deal with it uh, accordingly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't have, uh, oh, okay, Rakesh. Um, I think I'm gonna stop here after Rakesh and uh, let, let me give you a chance to comment. Go ahead. Uh, thanks, Tarek, and uh, yeah, pretty good discussion. Uh, uh, I just have one, maybe it's my misunderstanding, but um, the positioning of the network action substack, um, I mean, as we read the framework draft, it should never occur at the top of the MPLS label stack and the following label will uh, pop it if it's just below it. So if you're doing uh, like ingress to egress kind of uh, uh, behavior, right, for ne network action, then you kind of uh, end up with this um, in-stack data at the bottom anyways, right? Uh, I mean, does it, does it mean we are just talking about something just at the s equal to one uh, or just above it or just below s equal to one uh is that the discussion or maybe i'm missing something uh, so rakesh there uh yeah i mean depends if the action is all the way um from ingress to egress but um you know in, in segment routing uh, you can have multiple segments and you can encode different actions for different segments so uh, depending on uh, what the action uh, scope is, uh, at least this is how I, I interpret it. Oh, so just to uh, add to what you're saying, uh, Tarek, is that um, you could have different um, um, the disco network action substack per segment, um, uh, including in stack data, right, in the MPLS header. I we discussed this early on. I remember during the design team. Uh, breaking down the LSP uh, into segments. Okay, yeah, I mean yeah. it's a good, uh, good. Um, uh, if you if you can elaborate that, or even in the framework document. I yeah, I'm just trying to answer your question. I'm not as I'm at this time. I'm not uh, um, a solutions author, so I will leave uh, you know the solution authors to comment on your question as well. Okay. Um, and just for my my understanding as well, then maybe I might have misunderstood. But if anybody has clarification, I appreciate. It. I will leave the chance to anyone if they want to try to answer your question as well. Anyone wants to grab the mic? Nope. Um, okay, I don't have anyone else in the queue, and I was very careful not to log much of the discussion, the useful discussion that happened uh, on this action item. Uh, but I liked, uh, you know, there was a comment that this this input will be used uh, in the next chair's uh, coordination meeting. So that uh, I'm logging in. Um, if, uh, let me know if there's any other action uh, 
update that I need on this one. Uh, okay. The next, uh, the next action item. I'll move. I'm moving on uh, to the next action item. Uh, so like, uh, can can I quickly jump in uh, still on this point? I yes, Wim. If I may, yeah, yeah. I, just to make it clear to everyone. I mean, John said there is someone from Burson Silicon that was on the call, but we never asked the question to that person whether the Instack data support that they would have is capable on the existing hardware. That's statement has not been explicitly called out so i think if we make it if people say that there were people from that chipset on the call who said we can support instack data we never asked whether they would be able to do that on the existing hardware that they support today so let's be clear i some of the statements that we are making are a bit out of context or not explicitly validated okay Um, I'm okay. I'm, I'm going to leave because John commented on this. Uh, I remember, so, um, leave him a chance to confirm or assert that uh, this question was asked or not, but in any case, we can come back. Okay. He, here he comes. Uh, go ahead, John. Um, I think that Vim's point could be made of anybody's assertions about hardware. I mean, what we have is, is sort of random assertions about what hardware can do what. And that applies to all of the discussions we've had. I agree with that, by the way. Yeah, I agree with that. So I, I think any assertion that we make on hardware statements, for a lot of cases, I don't think it's I should be taken into account or is actually not really validated across the board. And I think we have to be careful if we uh, do decisions or whatsoever uh, on that basis, because I think it's easily to make a statement, but I think the people who are doing so should really, uh, I validate whether these statements are 100% correct or not. And I doubt uh, that. So that's the only thing that I wanted to highlight. Thanks. Okay. Uh, the next action item uh, that I have is it came up in the in the uh, chair's coordination meeting that happened uh, this week, uh, and uh, how it, it's relating to this draft uh, put forward by the authors on the um, reuse of ELI as a special purpose label into the M and A uh, uh, solution. Um, so we have a draft. A cautioning on the reuse or redefining this ELI. And uh, there's other proposals that um, obviously are also uh, putting forward ELI as a mechanism to indicate actions for MA. Um, la last two weeks, I think uh, we discussed this. Uh, 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 Tony presented this draft, he had slides at the time, and we took an action item on how do we converge moving forward. Uh, the chairs discussed this, and uh, I think uh, we have reached uh, a, a way moving forward, and that way, uh, you know, Loa is going to take action on it. Uh, I know who, he owns the action uh, next steps, but it was agreed upon the chairs on how to progress on that. Uh, I uh, I will leave, uh, you know, either Loa will uh, be sending emails soon, or he can talk about it now. Uh, either way, uh, so, uh, Tarek, just yes, shortly, uh, what we say is what the chair says is basically we have at least 2 different types of documents. 1 is, um, do not redefine the ELI and the other 1 is redefine the ELI. Uh, so. What the working group chairs said yesterday was that uh, we probably should call working group run the working group adoption poll for uh, each of uh, at least a representative for e e each each group of documents, and the one we um, 
uh, pick was uh, draft the draft came the crane that actually has uh, requested working group adoption and the other one is uh, draft Lee MPLS redefining ELI uh, that uh, also has a requested working group adoption. So we will start two separate working group adoption polls, one for each draft, and it will be a pretty normal working group uh, process. And then we see what happens. Um, if uh, we come up with a good support for both of the both of the documents, yeah, then we have to manage this in the working group in the working group if during the working group process if one of them actually is clearly much have much more support uh, or one of them lacks support then uh, we have a, a decision on which encoding to uh, to use uh, i will be sending this out probably late tonight or tomorrow morning my time uh, first will come a mail that i could describe what we're doing then we start the uh, working group adoption process as normal, first with an IPR poll, and after that we uh, run the actually uh, adoption poll. Uh, so look out for that and uh, res respond to uh, the documents and to participate in the discussion. I think that's it. Did I forget anything? Mm, I think you were honest to the to the point the points we agreed. Uh, I was trying to capture what you were describing as you were speaking, uh, so we have it logged. Uh, uh, I'll I'll uh, edit that offline. I just need to grab the the draft names, correct ones. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, um, I'll just log that you uh, you will be sending emails. Uh, soon yeah so the, the the process will be first one email that actually describes the process second two emails that actually do the ipr poll one for each of the documents and third uh, the actually working group adoption poll for for the documents And the purpose is actually to get this in as uh, part of the working group process, so we can kind of better judge the uh, consensus or support for each and every each and each or the other document. Okay. Uh... Um, I think that's it. I have an, an action item that we touched on uh, multiple times, but it uh, was suggested to reprioritize. I don't have an update on that. Um, so uh, um, with this, I can save the update and uh, go back to the other business for today. Mm. And the other business is the only thing I have one more thing I want to talk about the IANA registry. Uh, okay. But I want to do that after Stuart uh, pointed pointed out his uh, I, response to the IPR poll and what the implications are. I'm fine with that and. I think it's the right time to ask Stewart to come forward and talk about it. So, uh, go ahead. Um, unless you have um, anything else, Stewart, go ahead. Mm. He's muted. Yeah. He's away. Stewart, you're muted and. Try to unmute yourself. Sorry, what was your question? 
Yeah, the question we were giving you a chance to update on the IPR, uh, Paul. Oh, right. So IPR, sorry. Yeah. I was I was scanning through the document this morning, and I saw that the framework included uh, it called up the possible use of TTL bits, which we know we're using in other uh, drafts. Possible use in T TTL bits to signal things, um, actions that the packet uh, had to be taken on the packet. And I remembered a piece of work that we did. Um, I think it was around uh, 2010, 2012 that um, uh, that called for that, and it was for an OEM solution. Uh, and then I looked at the patent, and the first line basically completely generalizes it all. So I thought I'd better declare it. It's a Cisco one, so presumably it'll be on Cisco terms, Cisco standard terms. But I have no idea and no method of influencing it. Anyway, sure. I was just honestly declaring it. Thank you. So, so a few questions. First, do you think this is a blocking? Do you know if that patent has been disclosed in other in other other context? I don't recall disclosing it for anything else. Okay. Do you think it's blocked? It, it affects all of the TTL. Uh, well, it potentially affects all of the reuse of TTL um, um, uh, proposals. Okay. Including one by Cisco. But I don't know how general, I mean, you know, I, I, I make no claim to how general it is and how, how and whether it will stand, you know? Okay. Uh, do you think it's unless this is a hard question and you can't really answer but uh, do you th do you see this as blocking uh well that's for others to uh to decide i would not normally and i but i i have no you know connection or allegiance to cisco anymore of course um i would not normally worry about one of their patents because in the past they've always been very reasonable okay so would it be a Good action to actually the working group share. But it is not my call. Sorry. It is not my call. All I was doing was um, correctly reporting something. I, I, I understand. Yeah. Now I'm just asking for advice from you and from the group in general. So should we send a mail to um, the normal uh, Cisco person that handles their patents and ask if they want to disclose it? Well, I've done a third party IPR disclosure on it. So the way that works is if you know, then you fill in what you do know, and then it's up to the company what they do. They're very rarely used third party IPR disclosures. Okay. So you say no need for us to do anything. Just well, no, I mean, no, I mean I don't know what you can do, really. I mean, it's entirely up to the company whether they choose to action a disclosure or not give it but um i pointed to the text and um what, what more can i do i understand the status of your third party disclosure what, mm -hmm. I, what i'm asking about should the working group do anything oh well what, what what does it normally do i don't think i think it normally just lets these things go go by doesn't it um actually be very helpful if the chairs would poke Cisco and get them to see if they would respond. Okay, thank you. We yeah. do that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Take that as an action point. Correct. Okay. I, uh, poke Cisco. That's a good action point. So the inventors were myself, Dan Frost, and Clarence. People may or may not think whether that it applies and means anything, but we're not allowed to discuss that. And oh, that's right. Uh, we can discuss, think we, we could or should do. Um, well, there is no harm in asking um, the Cisco lawyer if they could um, um, decide what action they wish to take. I do that. So, so to be clear, you're not asking them whether it's blocking. You are asking them if they're going, if they're willing to file an IPR disclosure, 
And yep. if so, That's what those terms would be. It's up to us yes. to decide if we want to use the technology. Indeed. Yeah. Fine. That, that's okay. exactly what those mails normally says. So they're, they're against the solution that is proposing, right? Uh, well, it's against the framework, which just calls up the concept, and the patent first claim calls up the concept. Okay, so the framework, not only the solution. Right. They will have be required to declare it against their, I mean, assuming I'm not misinterpreting things, they will be required to declare it against their solution. I can't remember who the authors of their solution are. I I know the, the decline uh, draft proposes the, T, the TTL as flags for actions. Right, so who, who are the authors? Uh, there's Clarence and... Uh, well, Clarence is an, is a, is an inventor, so um, why don't you kick him to do something? Yeah. Uh, okay. Clarence is just going to defer to Cisco lawyers anyway. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's a good update. I'll save that. Okay, and uh, I know that uh, you, Loa, you were asking for updating on the registry for actions. Yeah, uh, I'm been thinking about uh, an IANA register for network action indicators and uh, I can't really make up my mind uh, where to put that registry uh, just now I'm thinking about if we should actually create a separate document for that registry um, and just uh, asking for feedback on that so the, if we put it in a solution, solutions draft, it could be blocked for, so we put it in the wrong solutions draft. That draft doesn't progress as we expected it to do. And others are, will be kept waiting for uh, progressing. So I think it could be better if we actually just put it in a, uh, in a separate draft. That's it. Uh, do you want to uh, log any action on this? Uh, uh, let's see. But I don't, Tony has his hand up. I don't okay. know if you want to talk about this. Okay. Yes, I'll talk about this. I also have my hand up for other things. Um, okay. on, th on this item, I think you have to wait until you have the solution selected because how the particular action is encoded um, is going to kind of affect the registry. Okay, if you're using opcodes for indicating actions, you're going to have one kind of registry. If you're using bits, you may have a different kind of registry. And so you, it's not kind of an independent decision. That's true. Could we come into a situation where we have both? Only if we're crazy enough to not make a selection about what? a solution. Yeah. yeah. So it sounds like it will be premature to create the registry until we get uh, which won't take very long anyway, until we uh, actually know what the, the shape of the real design is going to be. Sounds reasonable. Okay. I go back to sleep. Okay. Um, well, Come I on. still see Tony raising his hand. I presume it's on purpose, so... Go ahead. Could we please go back to the action item that we had about uh, redefining ELI? Uh, yeah. Um, so it occurs to me that maybe 
this is not the best possible direction. Um, if you have a Decrane draft adopted as a working group document, then that's going to look like you've uh, accepted a solution. And that's going to be problematic. Um, so perhaps a better solution is to not adopt any of these documents at this point. And therefore, I propose you just simply close this action item. So, so, uh, so I'm not sure if I'm tramping on someone, but Tony, how do you think we should move forward? I mean, um, clearly there's there's these two different um, camps. Um, there's the camp that say you use TTL bits uh, and redefine the ELI and those sorts of things. There's our draft, which says, you know, redefining ELI is a bad thing. And then there's all the others. H how should we get some convergence on that? Because sooner or later, we're going to have to have the, um, the discussion stroke argument. Well, um, the real question is whether the solution providers are willing to look at our draft and uh, willing to change their position at all. Um, if so, then they should um, uh, modify their drafts to uh, uh, agree with us. And if they disagree, then not, there's no action. And uh, that will end up uh, being a tick mark uh, that some people will object to when we talk about picking a solution. Greg, uh, I see you're in the queue, so why don't you go ahead, please? Yes, actually, as I was typing. Um, what Tony mentioned, said, um, um, helped me realize that uh, it's probably not that we are looking, especially in an open design team, uh, in re regard to uh, M&A. Not specifically um, what we, I can refer as a Bruno document, because it uh, doesn't address uh, all the uh, spectrum of uh, MNA, but what we uh, I can refer to as uh, JAG's MPLS extension header draft, and that draft uh, should be compared to uh, Kiriti draft. Uh, I, I'll come up, uh, I'll, I'll send it um, in a chat uh, names of these two drafts because um, Bruno draft does not address um, uh, the use cases that we have uh, now working group document. So uh, adopting that draft yes, it might lead to uh, following uh, this mechanism and uh, using ELI, not just uh, to split uh, entropy label space, which is questionable, and Tony demonstrated that, but uh, will lead us into their solution for uh, MNA in general. And we have uh, another document that proposes a different solution. So I think that and I agree with Tony, we need to look carefully at what actually uh, we are asking working group to discuss and which drafts to be adopted. Because I, I personally cannot separate Bruno proposal from the JAGS document. To me, these two are interdependent. So adopting Bruno document, in my opinion, automatically leads to adoption of JAG's document. Uh, thank you, Greg. Uh, Rakesh, you're next. Yeah, I do agree uh, the adoption poll for the Bruno draft. Uh, I think it makes sense. It's quite independent. Um, and I don't think uh, it, um, uh, it can be interpreted uh, differently as it was mentioned. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, Bruno draft is straightforward and um, it has a lot of value and there's been a lot of good discussions on it. And I agree to um, have an adoption poll for the Bruno draft. Thanks. 
Thank you. And Tony? We adopt Bruno's draft, then it seems to me like we have to adopt Jags's draft, and we have to adopt Karidi's draft, and we have to adopt how how uh, have to adopt how use draft. So we have to adopt adopt all of the solutions. That doesn't seem like helpful. Why not adopt? Wait and make a selection, and then adopt the one we're going to move forward. That is the purpose of adoption. So. Um, what that would suggest is that we, um, there's a proposal by G, isn't it, to do an analysis of all the candidates. So maybe we should progress that and see what that tells us about which ones to adopt. I think that would be useful as well. Uh, next in the queue is Rakesh. Uh, no, I'm just uh, reiterating that uh, uh, Bruno Drop uh, this will be decoupled with the MNA work uh, is quite independent. And uh, yeah, I'm just repeating what I just said before. Thanks. Um, okay, I'll go and ask. Uh, I don't understand your comment, Rakesh, when you say uh, Bruno's draft is independent of actions uh, MNA because it does propose actions. It has actually, they call them TTL flags. I mean, I, yeah, I'm aware of that. So they have defined one flag, but they said in the future, there could be other ones. So. Yeah, I mean, the Jack's draft, uh, sorry, if, uh, may I uh, or cut the queue or wait? No, go ahead, go ahead. So, oh, sorry. Yeah, so uh, Jack's draft uh, is is a position for the MA various accents uh, via of course and stuff. So that's what uh, I see as an MA uh, candidate draft. Um, okay, still not clear. <clears throat> um, I'm going to lower my hand and give Greg the chance to comment. Thank you. Um, once again, what I wanted uh, to make a point is. Um, Bruno draft does not address the scope of m and a so um, I don't see how it can be uh positioned and uh presented as the uh mechanism to address um m and a requirements so the document that proposed does not address the m &A, uh, requirements. So then uh, if offers wanted to be uh, discussed in a general mechanism outside of uh, scope of open design team, uh, they're free to do that. But in my opinion, it's not the solution, the solution for m &A problem. Thank you. Thank you. Loa? Uh, I'm kind of trying to figure out what situation I'm in now. As I hear it, I have a clear requirement from uh, the uh, draft Lee uh, MPLS redefining ELI to be adopted from, as a working group document from last meeting. Uh, I have a clear uh, uh, request that uh, the Bruno draft will be adopted as a working group draft. But I have, as I understand it, um, the two proposals also says that the other draft should not be adopted. So the thought behind uh, getting, uh, if we have support for both, enough support to make them working group document was to take them into the working group and the working group process and pro progress the document there uh, and not continue doing this in the individual draft. As I understand, the chair is not proposing uh, a running adoption poll for any document individual as now. So we are back in the deadlock. 
Okay, Loa, I, uh, I have my hand raised. I want to comment on that. Mm -hmm. uh, with the hat chair off now. Uh, so Bruno's uh, draft or Bruno, the crane's draft uh, has two, two pieces to it. One is the use of ELI as an indicator uh, for actions. And the th second thing is encoding the actions in the TTL fields. Um, so um, uh, what we're debating is the use of the ELI uh, versus not using the ELI. And um, my concern is that if we adopt or not uh, the, the, the crane draft, we are actually debating how actions are going to be encoded as well. So ideally, uh, we, we can just uh, uh, debate is ELI uh, the right indicator or not without talking about how actions are encoded. That's my feedback. And that's also how the uh, uh, the message I was going to send out is written. Oh, okay. Thank you. Rakesh, you're uh, in the queue. Yeah, hi. So the way I think uh, um, maybe it was Loa who had the comment that if both draft uh, the this uh, redefining ELI as well as Bruno draft are adopted uh, as an example, then what potentially can be interpreted and it's up to again during the working group adoption process and um, uh, guidance to the working group is that um, uh, these two drafts are adopted this may mean that uh, if jack's draft is adoption then uh, it would probably be favored to use spl as opposed to eli for in-stack data but that's just a, a thought on it so it, whatever the fear that it automatically means that or this, I don't think it's that way. I would have think that uh, uh, then it would be SPL based in stack data in the X draft, uh, which al already has that option in the draft. But that's my personal opinion. Okay, G, you're next. Yeah, <clears throat> my reading about of the product draft is that it actually defines three things. One is the to use ELI as the indicator. The second is to use TTL as the flags for the actions. And the third part is to use the part of the entropy label as a slice identifier. I'm not sure whether all of this together can be. Uh, uh, um, adopted to get uh, as a one draft, or we, if we consider the adoption, need to be need to be split it to separate parts. Yeah, I I second that as well. Personal opinion. Uh, okay, I don't have anyone else in the queue. Hmm. I don't know in which state we are back in uh, uh, on this action item. Uh, let Let's see. Uh, are we uh, back? Uh, are we, do we have a clear way moving forward, at least for Loa to take an action? Uh, I don't think so. I I don't feel like I have at least not the action we talked about yesterday. Uh, for me, the the question is really: should we redefine the ELI or not? And if we are not, should we use another SPL? That's the high level uh, question I actually want to have an answer to. Well, that we should be able to address through a conversation to adopt um, the. Tony's um, draft on ELI. I mean, that was quite a specific discussion, wasn't it? It wasn't about what way should we go with anything. It was about is it is it okay to repurpose the ELI? And I suppose doing the adoption call on that would cause uh, that discussion, which is what you want to trigger. So you are saying. Uh... 
run an induction poll on uh, Tony's document. Yes, because what that's say uh, that's discuss that's not discussing whether it's okay to use TTL in the way that Kariti does. It's simply saying is the reuse of um, ELI uh, a, a dangerous thing, which is what we we, we, we suggest as authors, or is it um, benign? So it's one way of forcing that discussion. Uh, if I may, sorry. Uh -huh. Uh, Greg, you're, uh, I have Rakesh ahead of you in the queue. So, ah, okay. Okay, Rakesh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so I, I think the point is that uh, if there is a, a Bruno requested the adoption uh, poll, and if there is a very strong um, support from the working group to adopt it, I don't think, uh, uh, I mean, it should be um, uh, blocked or, uh, or so let's not do adoption because it could get adopted, right? So uh, there is a support for it, there is a need for it. And uh, we, so uh, I say we should uh, issue the adoption poll and let the working group decide. Thanks. Uh, Greg, you're next. Thank you. Um, um, I, I want to make probably couple points. Uh, first, if I understand uh, Tony's document correctly, uh, the point is on whether it's a good practice uh, to use their um, entropy space we use uh, for uh, managing uh, flows, uh, whether to reuse EOI label uh, for MNA. Uh, seems as a separate uh, question because uh, if I understand correctly, uh, Bruno's draft proposes splitting their entropy label space, thus reducing uh, the variety of um, entropy that can be uh, used in the network. And uh, my understanding of what we discussed last week that. Uh, seems as not a good idea. Uh, JAG's document just builds on this proposal and uh, addresses m a but reusing AOI. And that's what the question the steward uh, stated, whether reusing the label, regardless of how the entropy label space is used, is a good practice or not. So I see here, uh two questions that uh the working group might discuss is first is a good idea to reduce the entropy label space and whether it's a good idea to reuse eli as the special purpose label for uh m a purpose because by itself the bruno draft does not address all the requirements of m a Thank you. Sorry, John, go if uh... I, I was away a bit, so uh, if, uh, if no one else is commenting, John, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, when we first had this discussion several weeks ago, what I thought we were talking about is using Tony's draft as a forcing function to get the working group to decide whether repurposing labels in general, special purpose labels in general, was a good idea or not. As it was going to be a sort of a general statement, we, we do not redefine labels or it's okay to define labels. Okay, agreed. And uh, I think Tony is next, so he can confirm that. That indeed was the point. And if people haven't understood that point by now, then I don't see how adoption is going to help. Um, it's there, you know, read it, agree or disagree. As to uh, whether um, Bruno's draft is a problem with entropy, 
Um, the presentation I gave last week was an indication that 16 bits of entropy is probably sufficient and uh, using all 20 is probably not strictly a requirement. And Bruno's draft also does make um, other bits available. So the real question is how big uh, entropy versus slice do you really want to make? And there are many ways of doing that. Um, we don't have to take Bruno's draft, e even if we adopted it, which I do not recommend. Um, we don't have to take it verbatim as it stands. We certainly could morph it. Uh, we basically have 62 bits to play with, and, you know, 20 of those have to go to entropy label indicator. Okay, fine. You've still got 42 other bits to play with. Uh, so you could do lots and lots of things. Okay. Jagan? Yeah, yeah uh, thanks, Sarah. Uh... Um, Tarek, um, first of all, you know, like, uh, the, uh, the Jack's draft, um, uh, talks about, uh, multiple options. One is one option is the, uh, redefining the ELI. Uh, second thing I want to tell is that, um, uh, the, um, uh, uh, Ducrine's draft, um, doesn't know, like, uh, interfere with the MNA, uh, as indicator. So I would recommend, uh, for the working group pulling. Okay. We're not following a solution at the moment, so that's my impression. Uh, uh, we we have a specific question that the chairs were trying to answer. I I do want to clarify that we're not following a specific solution. Uh, but thanks anyway, and I'll let Rakesh uh, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, just two points. Uh, one point is that uh, the redefining ELI draft. It uh, it kind of uh, contradicts what was in the JAX draft. So it actually refers to that draft and say it says this. So this is what um, it contradicts. Uh, it, it doesn't. It's not the contradicting Bruno's draft. Um, and the second point is that um, uh, if uh, if there is a draft that um, uh, I mean, a working group doesn't support, then or, or support probably adoption would be for that draft, not uh, having a second draft. This says that draft is not good, good and adopt that, uh, do adoption for that draft because it's not the right uh, process that uh, we've been following. I, uh, I have a clarification question. I didn't understand Rakesh when you said uh, the draft Lee MPLS redefining a like is contra is not contradicting Bruno's draft, but contradicting the Jack's draft. Um, can you clarify what you meant? Yeah, I think it talks about um, uh, the um, so Jack's draft talks about uh, six or seven uh, advantages. And uh, redefining ELI uh, contradicting it's those claims are not correct. So that's how it is positioned. Uh, uh, so that's what uh, I was referring to. Okay. Okay. Uh, Rakesh is correct. The point that I was trying to make in the draft is that uh, redefining ELI and extending the label stack with additional LSCs is not backward compatible and that's what jags draft does yeah thanks tony so tarek uh, we are over time uh, i don't think we will uh, converge anything anymore today I think you guys should put a note on this action team that uh, the chair should go back to the drawing table and uh, try to come up with a new proposal.
Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll save this and uh, yes, we did indeed three minutes over time and thanks everyone who joined. It was a very good uh, debate and discussions. So uh, hopefully next time we'll be converging on these items.